Gyarados was always meant to be a dragon. In fact, its entire design is based on the legend of a carp that jumped over the dragon's gate and turned into a dragon in Chinese and Japanese mythology. But Game Freak never gave it its true typing as a water dragon Pokemon, which raises the question just how overpowered would it be if it got this ridiculous typing? Last time with our Dragonfire Charizard, we found that the dragon typing was a massive advantage, allowing Charizard to beat the game on nearly minimum battles and get some pretty free setups even against some of its toughest opponents. Opponents like Lance, whose Gyarados usually completely destroys Charizard, were actually incredibly easy. But will Gyarados get as much of a power boost from this type change? It only takes a quick glance at the type weaknesses of a water dragon type to realize why Game Freak might have thought that this would be too strong, because the only actual weakness of a water dragon Pokemon would be dragon type. But in Gen 1, the only dragon type move is Dragon Rage, which does fixed 40 damage. So effectively, our water dragon Gyarados is going to have no type weaknesses in the entire run. But there's another factor the way that the AI determines type effectiveness. It's not as simple as it calculates the maximum amount of damage like it does in Gen 2, or that it tests each type and finds the move that is super effective. No, it uses this incredibly long convoluted list, and it just takes the first interaction that shows up. And since basically all interactions with the dragon type are at the very bottom of the list, the game basically just treats this as a water type Pokemon, unless it actually knows Dragon Rage in a particular fight. So it's not actually clear what strategies the opponents are always going to use against our Gyarados, and if it's actually going to pan out to be better with this dragon typing added on. There's only one way to find out, so let's do a full game solo run with it. Now as the second in a four part series, let's review the rules for this challenge run. For this series, we are replacing the Pokemon's secondary typing with the dragon type. So Gyarados will become a water dragon type in this run. All other aspects of their movesets are going to remain completely unchanged. They're just going to get the same moves that they would normally learn throughout the game. The Pokemon will be compared to its unaltered form in terms of time, in terms of final level, and in terms of score on my tier listing system. Because there could be cases where, for example, the Pokemon might take fewer resets to beat the game, but have to rely more on TMs since it doesn't have as many same type attacking moves. So we're just gonna have to see how it actually pans out. All of my other standard solo running rules apply. We're not going to use items in battle. We're gonna run on zero DVs or zero IVs for those coming from later gens so that we know that we're running the weakest possible version of this Pokemon. We're gonna ban stat boosting vitamins like protein and carbos, though we will allow rare candies only when we get to the lead. I will avoid taking optional battles unless they're actually necessary, but in those cases, I will be leveling up to the next damage rounding threshold. If you don't know about damage rounding thresholds, it's basically every time you have a level that ends in zero, three, five, or eight, the damage that's done by the Pokemon goes up by a little bit more in those particular levels. Place your bets in the comment section below if you think Gyarados is going to be better with the dragon typing. And with that being said, let's get into it. So here we go. We're going to start a brand new game here. And as I go through this, I'm going to just go as quickly as I possibly can. That's why we've got our name set, our rival's name set. We've got our Pokemon's name set. Lots of stuff is already set in. And I gotta get my mouse pointer off of this. <laughs> this is the one major problem of the new overlay is that it will capture the mouse pointer if it's on top of the, the retro arch. Terrible, terrible, it's trash. We should just throw the run already into Professor Oak's trash can right there. So here we go, we're gonna save the game. Let's just go ahead and get into the rival one fight. We have the same player name and whatnot as last time. So here, rival one should just be a matter of holding down Auto A and just tackling this EV. It turns out to be a five hit KO. That's not great, but you know, it'll get better. I'm sure, I'm sure of this. So now what I've found is this. Last time when we were trying to go up against Brock, 
What we found was that we had to be at level 13 in order to consistently beat Brock's Geodude. At level 13, it is very consistent. I can say from a lot of testing on this, that you basically just get to level 13 and then you blackout grind against Brock until you manage to beat him. The strategy is basically like this. Last time we just fought every trainer in here and then made our way to Brock's gym. Instead, this time what we're gonna do, we're only going to fight this last bug catcher. We are now at level five. We're just gonna spam tackle here. I expect to win here because he can also use string shot, which doesn't really have any purpose. And there we go. Yes, easy win, easy, easy win. So now we're just gonna pop up north. We're going to heal here in Pewter City. This is very important because it's about time to do some blackout grinding. So what we're going to do, we're gonna pop into Brocky Boy's gym here. I'm just gonna save the game just to be safe. And let's fight the Light Years Junior Trainer. His first Pokemon is Diglett. Diglett does not have great defense and HP, which means in spite of the fact that we're at a fairly low level, we can beat that Diglett very consistently. And now we can consistently also lose to the Sandshrew, which is perfectly fine. We're in the slow level up group. We need a lot of XP in order to get to level 13 in order to have a decent chance against Brock, at least just getting through the Geodude. So we're just gonna grind here for a while. Oh no, oh no, we beat him. Okay, we get to level 10 there at least. We gotta hope that this is fine. <laughs> I think we still wanted to lose there. What it all comes down to, I think, is we have to get to at least level 12. If we can get to level 12, then we at least have a decent shot of being able to blackout grind against Brock. If not, I may have to restart the entire run just because we got too good of a range there on that uh, Light Years Junior Trainer. This is a spot where we don't want to get lucky enough to beat him. <laughs> Here we are going to fight against Rival 1A. This might seem a little weird, like... We wouldn't even mind if he knocks us out here, honestly, but here we got through. We do get to level 12, very nice. Now the only issue is we've got a little less XP than I had last time when I tested this. Oh, we struggled there. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with the struggle strats, I think. I think that's the way to go. We'll, we'll use struggle because struggle is slightly stronger. So here I'm just gonna heal up with potions. Let's save the game. Let's go into this fight. Here, I'm just going to spam struggle. And we're doing decent enough damage, it looks like, that we should get through this one. So very nice. Struggle is enough to be able to beat the Geodude at level 12. Here, we're just going to knock ourselves out there. That's perfectly fine. That's exactly what we wanted. But here now, we have to still beat him two more times. I don't want to go use up all my PP against wild Pokemon or anything. Like I said, we're only fighting trainers here for XP unless it's a required battle for some reason like the Ghost Marowak and uh, here we got a couple nice misses from him but now we're missing no and so you can see like this is not really consistent it comes down to critical hits misses like there's a bunch of stuff that has to kind of happen here we just need to get that level of luck there we go we get to level 13 that's what we wanted now we still are not likely at level 13 to beat the Onyx and it's because it can use Bide and we cannot avoid damaging it. So we're just gonna have to keep grinding here but the grind gets faster at this point because of the fact that we can simply beat up on the Geodude. Let's just keep this going, come on. Geodude, you, you wanna get critical hit. That's what you want. You want the crits, buddy. There we go, nice. We're on to Onyx with 38 HP remaining. He's only doing one damage per hit with Bind at this point, so Bind's not that bad. He keeps using Bind though, come on. Come on, Brock. Don't you know it's a trash move? Okay, but here he uses Bind, and then we miss, but we knock him out. There we go, we get to level 17. Oh, Brock, 19 minutes, 29 seconds to beat him. That is not ideal, but we'll take it. So in a somewhat disappointing start, Gyarados actually struggles hard against Brock and Pokemon Yellow. And it has nothing to do with the typing, it's just because it starts the game with only Tackle. This isn't the case in Pokemon Red and Blue though, where it starts the game with Hydro Pump and Dragon Rage, so both of Brock's Pokemon are one-hit KOs. In fact, in Pokemon Red and Blue, Gyarados is so overpowered that I beat the entire game with a single level 5 Gyarados. I'll link that run below. 
For this run, we're sticking with the normal Pokemon Yellow moveset, which means that we're going to have struggles in the early game against any rock type Pokemon. So while Dragon Charizard was able to beat Brock on minimum battles in the last run, Dragon Gyarados has taken 19 minutes and 28 optional battles in order to get through that fight. But now we expect this run to speed up significantly as we move on to Mount Moon, get Water Gun, and take on Misty. We're gonna heal up right here. Let's go over and just beat everything up on the way to Mount Moon. Get that Water Gun, TM. That is the actual strat now. Now, normally I would say let's not use TMs, but here I think Water Gun is just such a natural TM to learn for this Pokemon. Like, I'm going to try to avoid TMs as much as possible, but really for the sake of speed, I think this is the way to go. So here, let's fight this super nerd. Here, I think I'm gonna go Water Gun. I think it's the way to go. Specials are less good. Here, I think Tackle is the way to go against Voltorb. And here, Water Gun is definitely the play against the Coughing. Nice. Easy win. We're gonna get the dome fossil, guys. Coming off the dome. Let's just save and come fight Jesse and James. I didn't heal. I don't think I need to. I think we've got plenty of HP. We're all the way up at level 18 anyway. So here we're just gonna tackle, tackle, tackle. Here I think we can uh, water gun the coughing to death. Oh, we almost one shot it. Oh, that was too bad. That was sad. <laughs> We wanted to just one shot that coughing. No, I think we take on Misty first. I think we at least try her because if we can just manage to get through this gym, we can get access to whatchamacallit, Bubble Beam. But yeah, she's just going to use tackle and like harden against us and X defense which I think is fine because I don't think her tackles are going to be that strong. We have a decent crit rate too. So here we get through Misty very easily. We get to level 20. We learn Bite. We also get access to Bubble Beam, which I think we're just going to slap onto the moveset right away. And that way we now have a very good moveset for this next section. So sure enough, we easily beat Misty, but this isn't actually any advantage due to our typing. While well, yes, we have a four times resistance rather than a two times resistance to water type moves, Misty's AI is smart AI, using the term very loosely in Gen 1, which just means that against any Pokemon that resists water, she's only gonna spam tackle and harden anyway. So at least through the first two gyms, we can basically say that adding the dragon typing to Gyarados would have no effect on the run whatsoever. But we are moving now into the Lieutenant Surge section. And while a normal Gyarados would avoid fighting Lieutenant Surge until it got a lot more levels, we might just be able to go straight into that fight since Electric is only neutrally effective. So I'm just going to heal. Let's get the rare candy and go and fight rival number two. Let's try this one right now. So here I'm going to move Bubble Beam into the top slot. There we go. Nice. Here's Sandshrew. Get Bubble Beamed. Rattata, get Bubble Beamed. Here I think we can bite Eevee. Yes, get bit. Oh, there we go. Look at that. You got destroyed. Dractyl never had a chance. Here I'm just going to heal very quickly just so that I have all the PP. We don't want to have PP problems as we go down to see our rival at that fancy schmancy party. So here, let's get to this Machop, the innocent bystander. He's just getting destroyed at this point. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We probably should have gone for bite on the drowsy, but it does not matter. It doesn't matter one bit. And let's see, we do learn body slam. So that is a strategy here. Rip uh, did not grab the full restore. There it is. But yes, so we, I said before, but I'll say this again, we're keeping this consistent. We will get body slam in these runs and we will get the extra rare candy on the SSN. Yes, I know there are optional battles, but it's just to keep everybody apples to apples because, you know, rather than having some take the fights, some not take the fights, they're logical fights to take. So we may as well just take them. It's the same with like getting the double edge TM uh, once we get to the rocket game corner. It's locked behind an optional rocket, but I think it's just logical to get it basically for every Pokemon. When, like when we get to Seedra, it's definitely going to want that move. We are not going to use unoriginal strategies like rest, so we're not going to mess with those, but we will come fight this guy. So here, Bubble Beam. 
completely destroys that guy. We're going to get the TM for Body Slam. We are going to teach it to Drakarp over Tackle. Nobody needs Tackle. Everybody wants to Body Slam. You know, the boring part of the run. We're going to come fight an old man. This old man, he got dogs. We're going to just do that. Now his pony, my little pony just gets wrecked. <laughs> we get the rare candy. Let's move on to rival number three. I'm going to save just because I, I like to save at these points. Here, it's probably not efficient, but that's fine. Body slam. Body slam. Here, let's uh, just bubble beam that one. Nice. And then uh, body slam his Eevee. Oh, it's not a one hitter. Rip. No. Oh, we get to learn Dragon Rage. Yes. We're learning Dragon Rage over Water Gun. I think it's a useful move at this point because it should allow us to just wreck some things. So very nice. We can now move on. And uh, we've got a nice move set going on here. Bubble Beam, Bite, Body Slam, Dragon Rage. We're looking pretty good. Now we have used some TMs, of course, like we've got the TM counter over there showing that we've lost some points that way. But, you know, we expected to lose those points, guys. Come on. Here we're going to just teach Charmander all the moves so that he can do his job. We're going to pop right in here. We're going to fight Lieutenant Surge. We're gonna, we ain't scared of Lieutenant Surge. We're only neutrally affected by electric moves. Now, the trash can puzzle reminds us of how trash Lieutenant Surge is, but... So here, let's get to this one. We are going to body slam him. And uh, here, just a couple bubble beams. There we go. We take him down easily, 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 easily. I'm not sure which was better to use bubble beam or use body slam or even to use dragon rage was probably the actual best play. But so here we have the wrapping glass. I'm going to body slam her. <laughs> I think this is the play. Oh, yeah. Look at the body slams. Just destroy her Pokemon. Nice. We don't have to worry about grass types if we just body slam to, to death like this. So here against the Rock Tunnel Hiker, Bubble Beam time, and we just destroy him. And here at about 33 minutes in, Bomberman goes down and we get to move on. So cool, 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 cool. We have made progress though. We are going to pop right up here. We're going to go to the fifth floor. We're going to now come over here. Let's buy two fresh waters. We only need the two. I don't think we're going for Hyper Beam, because we learned it by a level up anyway here. So if we get a, to a high enough level, we'll just learn Hyper Beam that way. But we will get access to Ice Beam. And I think Ice Beam is super important in this section. And now I think the first step is to go into the Rocket Game Corner. We, like you could say, minimizing battles, use the Pokedol glitch. I prefer not to. I only do that in my super minimum battles runs. So instead, we're just going to pop up here and see this dude and be like, hey, what's up, dude? Have a bubble beam. And uh, I'm going to body slam your bat. <laughs> Somehow you body slam a bat. It works. It just works. <laughs> so here we can get the PP up. We've got two PP ups now, guys. Amazing. We're going to fight this guy because we can get double edge and we can get an extra nugget over here. It's not like it's necessarily needed but they're easy one hit KOs there anyway on those machops so just go there get TM10 get the nugget nice so here Jesse and James they're going to try to challenge us we're going to try to humiliate them we are up to level 29 now and the body slams should make quick work right there very nice on to Giovanni sorry I save a lot I know they're unnecessary, but here we're just gonna hold down A on Bubble Beam and it should completely wreck these Pokemon. So yes, the Persian's doing decent damage, but we knock it out nicely and there we go. So now we can go ahead and just dig on out of here. I am going to now go to Lavender. Let's get this part done because these should be easy fights before we go take on Erica. So here in Lavender, Ooh, there we go. Rival number four time. The strategy is clearly to go for Ice Beam. That's a one shot. Shelter is going to get Dragon Raged because it's only going to use Supersonic anyway. Vulpix gets Bubble Beamed. The Sandshrew gets Bubble Beamed. 
And now the Eevee, I think we just body slam it to death. There we go. Nice. So we easily, easily, easily win. We've taken 31 optional battles up to this point though. So uh, we can't feel great about this, but all of those except a couple were basically before Brock. Jesse and James time, let's go. 41 minutes in, okay. So here, Bubble Beam is just going to not one shot there. That's ridiculous. Uh, here, let's go Bubble Beam on Arbok. It's gonna be a two hitter. And now we've got to deal with the wheezing. Bubble Beam is technically stronger, but it just didn't get the job done. We should have two shot it with the Dragon Rage. That would have been the way to go. But very nice. We've gotten through that fight. We can now heal up and uh, I'm gonna go take on Erica, actually. This should not actually be a hard fight, I don't think. I don't think. Think is the operative word here. We're just gonna go Ice Beam. It's gonna be an easy two hitter there. Oh, I didn't even heal coming into this fight. <laughs> Rip, we freeze the Weeping Bell, nice. And now she goes for Stun Spore and misses. Easy win. Easy, easy, easy win. She has nothing, guys. Nothing at all, I say. So comparing to a normal Gyarados, there's absolutely no difference in the Erica fight. The way that the game determines type effectiveness means that she's still just gonna spam grass moves against us. The fact that we have Ice Beam, even with a normal Gyarados, makes this a pretty simple fight at this level. So halfway through the game, only one battle has actually been affected by this type change, the Lieutenant Surge battle, but even that one's doable with resets where you could just put him off until just before Giovanni. So really, there's no benefit in the first half of Pokemon Yellow to having the dragon typing. But that might be about to change as we get to the massive level jump that happens around Rival 5 and Koga. So here, let's uh cycle. And I think we're going to go down to Koga's gym very quickly. So here we are going to fight this juggler. I think Body Slam is the name of the game here. Okay, we don't one shot them. I think we will one shot here against Kadabra though. Psybeam did a lot of damage, but we do take it out. We get Headbutt, but I think that's fine. There we go. Now, I don't think we necessarily want to fight Koga yet. Koga's AI is set where he's just going to sit here and spam uh, Sleep Powder with the first and the third Venonats on his team. The reason is because the game actually has a set order in which it tests for type effectiveness. And basically it just goes from the top of the list to the bottom of the list. And once it finds any interaction, it just pops out of the list. And what happens is that the part of Grass being super effective against water is higher up in the list of the interactions that the game checks than grass being resisted by dragon. So a water dragon type will end up in situations where the AI, the quote unquote smart AI of the game, will always want to use grass type moves against it. On the other hand, it's not going to want to use ice moves against us because it's going to think that ice is resisted by water, and that's the interaction it checks first. Let's just see. Let's see how this fight looks at this point. So here, we're just going to surf against the Sand Slash. That's an easy win. We're going to surf against Ninetales, which also is, ooh, not a one-hit KO. We get quick attack there. Thunderbolt on the Cloister looks to be a two-hitter. Now we've made it to Kadabra against whom I think Body Slam is the play. We do one shot there. Jolteon will use Thundershock 100% of the time. Now we did not heal before that fight, so I think if we heal, let's just do that. Sorry guys, slight inefficiency there, but we did scout, we did get good information. So here, let's try this again. Surf is going to take out the Sand Slash, nice. Ninetales might be a range here, I'm not sure. Here we'll just Body Slam him down from there. Thunderbolt to the Cloister. Supersonic misses this time. We're still on full health going into Kadabra. It does hit that Psybeam, but I think that's okay. I'm actually going to body slam the Jolteon. I was hoping for a uh, 
paralysis there, but it doesn't matter. We get through just fine. Easy win. And it's all because of the fact that our weaknesses of, you know, normal weaknesses would be electric and grass. They're just neutrally effective to us, you know, as a water type. So we don't even have to worry about the normal water weaknesses. So cool. We're making progress. 49 minutes. Not looking too bad. We're going to surf on Nidorino. And then I'll just uh, ice beam it or something to finish it off. Persian, we definitely want to surf. We one shot there. Nice surf here on the Rhyhorn. And now on the Nido Queen, surf is going to be a two hitter. Not quite a one hitter. I mean, our stats just, our stats are really good. The problem is that we're in the slow level of group. So we're just under leveled against everything at this point. So now let's just see if we can get through Koga or not. That is the question. Here, save the game. Koga time. Okay, so here what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to surf here first. It's not a one hitter, but we do get a nice two hit range there. Surf on this one. It's the crit, so very nice. Surf here. We do get sleep powdered. It's going for double edge. He X attacks and he gets a critical hit. That's not really ideal. And then we get wrecked. Okay. So it's clear that critical hits can get us through this. So we're going to take a couple attempts at this at least. You know, we can also get misses from sleep powder. It can miss 25% of the time. So that's fine. We get the nice crit there. Yes. Here, I'm going to body slam this off because I kind of want to paralyze it. Once it's paralyzed, yes, he will use double team, but we are faster than him now, I think. Oh, we're just missing everything. Okay, there we go. We hit a surf. He gets toxic. Okay. And we land the body slam. Very good. So we get through Koga just like that. Sorry, we ran out of surf PP, but no problem. Cool. We are through another gym. So here, I think the strategy is to fly back to Pallet. We'll come say hi to mom. We'll let her heal us. We're going to go down to Blaney Boy's gym here. Tombstone Brothers, let's get into this fight against Blaine. Yes. So here, we're just going to get confused turn one. Rip. Looks like a two hitter with surf on that first, um, whatchamacallit, the first nine tails. We get fire spun here, but takedown is the one we really don't like. We get a growl, that's good. Arcanine goes reflect, we're going surf, goes reflect again, and he goes reflect again. <laughs> oh, Blaine, you legend. Oh, look at him, he's just like, you're using surf against me. I shall reflect it. <laughs> that's that's not how reflect works in Pokemon, buddy. <laughs> he's he's thinking this is a Final Fantasy game. You know, if you use magic on somebody and they use reflect, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the old like Final Fantasy six guys. Come on. You know, reflect would bounce the. So the Koga fight is essentially the same, whether you have a normal Gyarados or a Dragon Gyarados. It's just the same ranges. He uses the exact same strategies against you. It's just a matter of getting the critical hits and landing enough attacks in order to knock him out. The real difference in this section was Rival 5, because for a normal Gyarados with its four times weakness to electric type moves, taking down that Jolteon is basically impossible. It will always outspeed, and Thundershock is the only move that it will use in the Rival 5 fight. That means that Gyarados is not getting through, and we have to go down to Blaine before we can even come back and fight Rival 5 again, unless we're going to take a ton of optional battles. Dragon Gyarados, on the other hand, exploits the fact that it's only neutrally affected by Thundershock and can get through that fight with full health without any crazy luck whatsoever. And Blaine is another spot where we get a massive advantage with our Dragon Gyarados. A normal Gyarados is too underleveled to really match up well here in spite of the fact that this water type, moves like Flamethrower and Fire Blast do way too much damage. 
On the other hand, a Dragon Gyarados is four times resistant to fire, making fire type moves basically a non-factor in this battle and allowing us to beat him on the very first attempt, in spite of our level disadvantage. But now it's on to Sabrina, another gym leader who really shouldn't be any different for these two Gyarados, but let's see if she's an easy win or if she knocks us out a bunch of times. So we have named her waifu Sabrina in the new overlay. Oh, we're getting flashed. No. Come on, body slam it. Yes. Body slam. Oh, we paralyzed the cadaver even. Nice. Alakazam, Psy waves. We paralyze it. Come on. Come on. Hit her. Hit her. No, we get psychic down. Rip. So uh, accuracy. It's, it's a thing. It's a problem, guys. <laughs> We just need less accuracy nonsense. There, we get no flashes. Oh, sad day. And she misses Kinesis as well. She goes Reflect. But here we get the critical hit. So second attempt, we easily beat Sabrina. We've only got four resets at this point. We're really not doing too bad. I think all of the spots we really could have gotten through uh, technically without crazy luck. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this run so far, actually. So here, let's pop on up to Giovanni. Here he goes, dig, surf, does one shot there, okay. Goes screech with the Persian and then he slashes us. I think we can get guard specs though and get through this. So here we're just trying to get, okay, he misses a fissure there, that is much better. Screech missed, guard specs, goes fury swipes this time. That's kind of what we wanted to see. Get to level 41, we can learn hydro pump or maybe no, maybe we just leave our moveset as is. So he goes thunder, that's basically fine. Guard specs, that's also basically fine. He misses a thunder there, that's very fine. And then he hits the thunder and gets a crit. I think we should go take some more optional battles here. So here, let's try this again. He misses Fissure this time, good. He screeches again. Get a nice crit there. Okay, we've still got 107 HP. We get the range on the Nido Queen there. We outspeed Nido King, we knock it out, nice. And then Rhydon is guaranteed one hit KO every single time. Nice, 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 nice. I like that, I like that. Let's go ahead and fight our rival, number six. Rival number six, Surf, just destroys that first Pokemon, nice. Oh, I didn't mean to go Thunderbolt, rip. Oh, he takes in sunlight, very nice, Ice Beam, <laughs> rip. I kind of messed that one up, guys, I'm sorry. Here, Ninetales goes down easily, Thunderbolt here on the Cloister. We get confused, no. Okay, we have leveled up to level 47, we make it to Kadabra, it goes Psychic, that's not ideal, but he potions there. He thunders there. That was not what we wanted to see, the critical hit thunder. Cadaver goes psychic, but Body Slam gets a nice critical hit there. He thunder waves us. We paralyzed him. He paralyzed us, but then he just knocks us out. Okay, so clearly this is not that consistent, at least. I think it's possible to win, but I'm not going to grind it like crazy here. Let's just get over here and uh, take some fights. Otherwise, I mean, like truly efficient grinding is probably just putting the other Pokemon in the PC and grinding this fight over and over again, just because so many things are one hitters. Like that, guaranteed one hitter. That, guaranteed one hitter. This one, guaranteed one hitter. Now Cloister's where we have to, you know, we'd have to get a good range. Hey, it misses Supersonic though. Kadabra is still faster than us. I don't think we're gonna speed it for a while, but we get through, nice. We get to level 49 there. We paralyzed his Jolteon. Thunder still did good damage and we didn't get the miss. The AI, this beautiful, beautiful AI. But the whole point is that if, if the game considered the interactions of Dragon with Electric first, 
then we wouldn't have to worry about these electric moves. There he misses the thunder wave and we knock him out. There we go. Nice. See, we got through. It's just a matter of resets, guys. Now, Giovanni might be the very first fight in this entire run where the dragon typing is actually a detriment to Gyarados. Because with the flying typing, we can avoid all of his ground type moves. And while yes, a thunder could knock us out, we've seen that critical hits or guard spec allows us to get through both of the Nidos, and then we could simply knock out the Rhydon in a single hit. So normal Gyarados beats Giovanni on its very first attempt. That being said, the final level was exactly identical. And since rival 6's Jolteon is going to one-shot a normal Gyarados with that thunder, it's not really that much of an advantage as we head on to the lead. But as we get to the Elite Four, the challenge is never really any of the members. Sure, Lorelei's kind of hard to get through, but we got Thunderbolt. Bruto's nothing. Agatha's just going to be random. Lance is the first time we might actually struggle in this section, given that he does use electric type moves in Pokemon Yellow. But yeah, so Dracarp, he's still here at about an hour and 12 minutes. We do get to use our rare candies once we get up here to the league. Will we make four levels in this section? Probably, probably. I'm willing to bet we get to level 65 here. I think this will work. So here, let's go ahead and buy our full restores. Nice. We've put everything in the PC. Let's save the game. Let's get up here and fight Lorelei. Here, let's just Thunderbolt. We get Paralysis. Okay, she goes for Rest. That doesn't really matter because it's still looking like a two-hitter. Oh, a three-hitter here, but Body Slam finishes the job. Thunderbolt here on the Cloister. She Super Potions. That's perfectly fine with us. Thunderbolt here on the Slowbro. She goes Psychic. That is also perfectly fine with us. We get to level 50. Here's where I think we can... Oh, we get put to sleep by Jinx. No. Auntie Olga... Auntie Olga, no, she kissed us. That's all she wrote, guys. So here we fainted. We're just going to keep the P or the XP pop back up here. I just think we might want to use the rare candies later, so I'm going to avoid them for now. We already know that we're slower than Charizard anyway, so it doesn't feel too bad to just grind here for a minute. And here, this is going to be a two-hitter. Nice. We're still slower than Jinx. Goes double slap, though. It's not using ice-type moves because the game thinks that we are resistant to ice. So here, Lapras is not going to use ice. Okay, we almost beat the Lapras there, so this is clearly a doable fight. It's just about act or, uh, confusion luck there once we get to the Lapras. Get a takedown. That's fine. Here, level 51 comes in. Here, we're just going to easily beat the Cloister. Here, Slowbro can go for Amnesia. I mean, I guess it's, it's kind of the same either way. Thrash from Jinx, but we'll get through that easily. Thunderbolt here. Thunderbolt lands again, and we get through. There we go. Lorelei, no problem whatsoever. Save the game, and now let's just beat up on Bruno. So here, Surf just destroys that one. Surf is going to destroy that one. Surf destroys that one. Surf, like, just look at these Pokemon melt to just getting splashed with some water. <laughs> you just splash water on Bruno and he goes down. Easy win. We get to level 54. Now is the spot where I think we might want to start rare candying. So I'm going to rare candy up here. Remember, we beat the game last time at level 65, so I think even just getting to level 60 here, dropping a full restore, and this is where we do want to start elixiring. I think this is the way to go. So here, Agatha time. But what we're going to do, we are going to surf first. 
Okay, we actually wanted to uh, like Thunderbolt here on the Golbat. She swapped. Okay, she swaps to Haunter now. We're no longer confused. Very nice. We get confused again though. Mega Drain, fortunately, is just neutral anyway. So we get a knockout that Gengar. Nice. We're going to knock out this Arbok, I think. Now it's just about the final Gengar. Hypnosis missed. Goes for Psychic and he gets the crit to knock us out. We're going to reset right there. So here, let's try again. So here we get a lick. Of course, Agatha, she's just going to be random this whole time. We almost have that first Gengar knocked out. So we just need to land one more hit. Any hit will do. We're confused, but okay, she doesn't heal, so we do get through there. Okay, we get the freeze with the ice beam there on the Haunter. So we just get a free KO there. We're going to get a free KO here on Arbok. Back to Gengar. It hits us with Psychic. Did like 47-ish damage. I think as long as we don't get another Psychic, two Psychics in a row. There we go. Nice. Agatha goes down. Easy win. So now I do think that Lance is one of those that could be hard. So I'm going to drop some more rare candies here. We can go up to level 65 and still have one rare candy left for the champion. So here against Gyarados, Thunderbolt right there. Oh, did not mean to Thunderbolt there, rip. Here, let's Ice Beam there, nice. Go Ice Beam right there. Cool. Here we're going to go for the Surf against Aerodactyl. Easy KO there. And Ice Beam on the Dragonite. It's an easy one hit KO. Very nice. So we've made it to the champion. We're slightly under an hour 30. So the champion could be where our Dragon Gyarados finally realizes a massive advantage over a regular Gyarados in this run. Because here we absolutely will end up getting hit by an electric type move from the final Jolteon. But while a normal Gyarados gets completely destroyed by that move, our Dragon Gyarados might just have a chance. Let's just go ahead and surf right there. Easy. We get psychic by Alakazam, but we body slam it to death. Good. Ice beam. We get leech seated, but I think that's fine. Oyster comes out. We thunderbolt it to death. Nine tails just goes for the quick attack. That's perfectly fine. Jolteon, thunder wave. We get fully paralyzed. So we lost there, I think, because of the paralysis. So here, let's surf again. Nice. Body slam here. Oh, we got like a crazy strong side beam against us there. That was not ideal. Okay, Thunderbolt here. Takes that one down. Surf there. Takes that one down. Now, Thunder, Body Slam. We get the paralysis, and there we go. Second attempt, we beat the champion about an hour 24.30. Here's what we found, right? We ended up with 62 optional battles, 19 resets. We used six TMs. So it drops our score all the way down into the B tier, 76.6. Not great. I think that you can definitely be more efficient with this. Of course, Pokemon Red and Blue, you'd get through Brock without all those optional battles. So our Dragon Gyarados beat the champion at level 65, but that turns out to be exactly the same level that I beat him with a normal Gyarados. Now I did use Hyper Beam strategies and Blizzard with the normal Gyarados, two moves that I actually didn't use in this run, but effectively there wasn't much of an advantage gained in the entire run from the Dragon Typing, which is a kind of surprising result given that the Dragon Typing removed all of our type disadvantages. The far more interesting comparison is how our Dragon Gyarados compares to the last run we did with a Dragon Charizard, where Dragon Charizard is head and shoulders better than Dragon Gyarados. And it all comes down to one move. 
the difference between Gyarados and Charizard, the reason why Charizard is so much better in this challenge is not only does the Dragon type cover up for Charizard's weaknesses, it has access to Swords Dance. <laughs> so basically, the entire issue of a Charizard run is just getting to Lance and setting up the Swords Dances. Once you're able to set up the Swords Dances, you're able to sweep his team, and that's the only real wall for a normal Charizard. The way that the Dragon typing makes it better, of course, is that in the case of Charizard, you do not have to worry about getting just Hydro Pump every single turn, and Hydro Pump is neutrally effective anyway, rather than super effective. So you just get that situation now where, okay, if he wants to Dragon Rage you three times in a row while you just set up your Swords Dances and let you sweep him from there, that's perfectly fine. That's what Charizard does, and it just dominates. Gyarados' problem, in my opinion, in Gen 1 at least, was the fact that it didn't get any badge boosting moves. Unless you're going to go double team, that's the only way to badge boost as a Gyarados. There's a huge separation then between Pokemon that learn a badge boosting move and those that don't. You can have top tier stats, but without badge boosting moves, you're generally just going to underperform. You can have really great stats, but without something like a wrapping move or a sleep move, you're just going to really underperform. You generally find that even mediocre Pokemon, if they get wrapping moves, badge boosting moves, at least one or two good type coverage moves, they generally do really, really well in these challenges. Gyarados just doesn't get any of that. But it does beat the game. And uh, that was not too bad, honestly. I mean, like 19 resets, I know people can kind of, you know, thumb their nose at that, but we didn't really have any spots where we were going for crazy, crazy resets. I mean, Rival 6, yes, I could have grinded for some more levels before that. Giovanni, we could have grinded more levels before that. But otherwise, everywhere that we had resets, I think was pretty logical, made decent sense. The time was a little bit better with this strategy overall, if I do recall correctly. So I don't know. I'm I'm feeling like I don't think I did it after Drizard, but I'm feeling like going and beating up on Mewtwo. What do you guys say? Come on. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've been here to beat up on Mewtwo. So here, let's fight Mewtwo just because we can. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to body slam him. Oh, he barriers. He knows. He knows, guys. But now it's too late. Unless he does that. <laughs> So here we're going to surf him. He's barriered, so I think surf is the play and he still kills me. <laughs> oh, Mewtwo, you legend. So here, come on, come on, let me body slam you. No, he just one hit KO'd me. Oh, that was terrible. Come on, Dracarp, you were supposed to be the one. Oh, look how much damage that does with the crit. Oh, and he barriers and then he just destroys. We need not to get hit by a critical hit psychic and his crit chance is 25% gen one. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, this is, this is sad. This is sad for carp. At this point, you're pretty much having to go for like the, the, whatchamacallit, the, oh, there we go. Okay. I was going to say we were going to have to go for freeze strats. Oh, but man, here we are. We have made it to the end of the game with Dracarp. Level 67 this time. We ended up with 195 attack, 133 defense, 135 speed, 160 special, 225 HP. Yeah, the game says that we're water flying. Don't worry about that. We're a water dragon. We know it. The game is wrong, guys. This Pokemon was always a dragon. Clearly. Come in with a final move set of surf thunderbolt ice beam body slam it's it's basically four moves that i think pretty much everybody can get on board with might haggle a little bit over oh you should have added blizzard don't think there was ever a spot where blizzard was you know like ice beam over blizzard was the strategy don't think that ever happened so i just avoided that tm but there we go an hour 30 to get through all the way through mewtwo this time not too bad Anyway, I'm going to get to editing this down. I hope you guys enjoy it. I will see you in the next one. And just for the channel members, just expect a bunch more, guys.
coming up because now that the overlay is mostly working, yeah, we can see some warts here, but now that it's mostly working, we're going to get this going. Anyway, that does it for this one. I will see you in the next one. Later, guys.